Last year in 2022, I had an awesome journey with my bicycle. I started in Iceland with a volcano eruption. This was such an amazing, mesmerizing experience. I could watch lava for hours, the sounds it made, it was just incredible. However, after Iceland, I had no idea where I'm gonna go and where the road is gonna take me for the winter time. I went to Spain for a few days and then decided to take the ferry across to Africa. I'd never been to Africa before and this is just the start of such an incredible journey. That was the best decision I I was so excited when I crossed over. I had never imagined I would end up in Africa on my bicycle. I started the journey with another cyclist from England. On our third day in Morocco, we cycled through a remote village in Rift Mountain. We got invited to a traditional Moroccan wedding. It was such an incredible cultural experience. I had the chance to experience all the rituals and traditions. I was so overwhelmed in the moment with the music, dancing and hospitality that I didn't even care if anyone stole my bicycle during the wedding. Nothing else mattered in that time. Morocco has such incredible landscape. These rugged peaks and rough mountains just stretch as far as one could see. I enjoyed every little bit of them. Sometimes in Morocco, the police escorts you for the safety reasons, which is not really necessary and it feels weird. They did escort us once and I did not enjoy it. Soon after, the English cyclist and I decided that we have very different traveling styles and we should part ways. So I continued my journey alone. I went to Fez and visited one of the oldest medinas in Morocco. They have a big tannery where you can watch how they tan the leather. I had a chance to stay with a local family and try some traditional meals. The next day, one of the family members escorted me out of Fez and was on my way to Atlas Mountains. I spent the night in Inlu with another local family. The place is incredible. The surrounding forests are full of monkeys, which I just loved, and I went to see them. Also, I went up a local mountain and the views were spectacular. It was such a great place. It was an amazing place for a little dance on the top of the hill. Morning. The following morning, I carried on towards the Atlas Mountains. I followed some very desolate and remote roads as well which was just incredible. In Hunifra city, I met another amazing family who invited me into their home and I spent two nights with them. I was heading to Melchior in Atlas Mountains where I had a chance to catch up with the English cyclist I cycled with before and meet another German cyclist. The views were just incredible the further into Atlas Mountains I went. I caught up with the German cyclist and together we went into the Dados Gorges which was such an unbelievable and beautiful ride.
I was heading for the Sahara Desert, I wanted to do a 150km long cycle through the Pachas land. I plan to do it over 3 days. The German cyclist and I tried to do it together, but quickly got stuck in the soft, deep sand. We were not making any progress. He dished the idea of cycling across the desert patch with his bicycle, but I didn't give up. I returned to town and decided to take a slightly different route suggested by a local man. In the evening, he showed me around the local dunes, and in the morning, he escorted me through the darkest part of the route that I was taking. The desert landscape was really vast and pristine. It was an incredible place to be. I was so grateful to be able to enjoy this. I was a bit sad to return to the society and continue my cycle on the road, but the adventure further south was calling me. The cycle into the Fraud was one of my favorite rides in Morocco. It was so incredible. It was like out of this world. The landscape was so different than anywhere else I had been in Morocco before. I had agreed with the English and the German cyclists to meet in the Fraud and see if we can travel together. We were not cycling as a team. We were always recycling separately. In Tefraud we realized that our traveling styles were really really different and we decided to part ways. I did cycle with the German cyclists for another couple of days until I reached Gomem, but after that our paths diverged and we went our separate ways. After a month or so in Morocco, it finally rained. It was really bizarre to see the rain in the desert landscape, and the roads were flooded, but it was well needed for the very dry landscape. I decided to cycle to Mauritania and Senegal, which meant I had to cycle through Western Sahara. That was a two week long cycle along these featureless straight flat roads. I didn't want to tackle this challenge on my own and I found a group of other cyclists that were heading in the same way. We all decided to cycle together. We were greeted by a sandstorm once we entered Western Sahara. The storm lasted four days. We cycled through it for two days. It was a great challenge with a strong headwind, but I enjoyed it. We had to cover our faces with scarves and protect our eyes with goggles. Any bare skin had to be covered as it hurt so much when we were blasted by the fine sand. The air around us had a bizarre orange tinge to it. It felt like we were on Mars, not planet Earth. Jade, the French girl, decided to take a bus down to Dakhla and meet us later again. 
the three of us continued our cycle south after the storm. Such a great start of the new year, even had a flat tire on the 1st of January. In Dahwa, we were reunited with Jade, and we got a new cyclist joining our group, a Japanese cyclist hero. All together, we were heading further south. In Mauritania, we were taking the iron ore train. It is one of the longest trains in the world. It can reach up to two or three kilometers in length. It goes through desolate desert landscape with no roads. Going inland, the train is empty. However, coming back, it is loaded with iron ore. Both ways, there's a lot of toxic, toxic dust that you shouldn't inhale. The journey can last anywhere between 10 to 20 hours. Another cyclist and two hitchhikers joined us for the ride. It took 11 hours for our train to reach our destination. It was a very unique experience riding the train. We took a local taxi to go to a place called Shingeti, which is a tiny village in the middle of the desert. The ride was on the back of a pickup truck. The driver was going over 100 kilometers an hour and sometimes it felt like we could bounce out of it. But it was a rough ride, but really fun. The two hitchhikers and I decided to spend the night in the desert surrounding Shingeti. It was such a great idea and we felt like kids in a massive big playground of endless sand dunes. The following day, it was time to return to Tar, where my bicycle was patiently waiting for me. It was time for me to get back on my bike and rejoin the group of cyclists who were cycling towards Senegal. After Nokshot, the capital of Mauritania, it was only three of us that continued the cycle together. The other cyclists stayed behind. On the day before we left Mauritania, we met these Senegalese women who were teaching us how to dance and we spent great time together with them. A flat tire on Hero's bike became a daily occurrence as we got closer to Senegal.
The crossing into Senegal was pretty straightforward and very easy. Soon we were cycling through the streets of San Louis. I left the other cyclists and headed to Dakar and then continued my cycle back north, back to Morocco. On the way north, I hitchhiked a ride with the lorry. I returned to Atlas Mountains once I reached Morocco. It was an incredible experience to see snow in Africa. After spending a couple incredible weeks with my friend Zikradi, I was back on my bicycle, heading north. It was the month of Ramadan and I was invited in by a local family to share the first iftar meal with them. On the way north, I was cycling over to Zin Test Mountain Pass. I couldn't believe the stunning views I was seeing on the way up. I met a group of Polish cyclists. They decided to come together and they joined in for a little dance the next morning. In Morocco, women decorate their hands and feet with henna on special occasions. Since the day I arrived in Morocco, I really wanted to try it, but never had a chance. I stopped at this house and asked if I can camp on their land, and they invited me into their home. I stayed with them for two nights, and they offered to do the henna on my feet and hands. I was so happy. After two nights in Taza with another local family, it was time for me to head further north. It was almost time to end my journey in Africa. I was really sad about it, but I had to return to Europe. My adventure in Africa was incredible. This was a journey I will never forget. I immersed myself in the rich culture, traditions and history of these diverse countries. I crossed paths with many amazing and kind people. Some of them have become dear friends of mine who I will cherish forever. I hope you enjoyed watching this journey and I wish you the courage to follow your dreams and fulfill your wishes. Happy travels everyone. Thanks for watching.